You should take a look over there. Perhaps you'll find what you need there. You should take a look over there. You should take a look over there. Juliet beams with joy at the sight of her new gown. Never before had she worn one as lovely to a ball. She slips into shoes, then it's off to the bustling ball, her intent to entice Count Paris with her charms. The Capulet Ball, with all the gleam of the nighttime sky and its sparkling stars. Amongst all the magnificence, one of which is truly striking. It catches the eye of young Romeo. The lad leaves all brooding behind him and throws caution to the winds. The star, it attracts him, and just as surely he begins his orbit. That star is Juliet, who glances behind Romeo's mask and spies a man whom she will love for all eternity. Dancing, the two come closer and closer. But just as Romeo's lips gently nestle on Juliet's, her cousin Tybalt bursts between them, dashing the constellation in thunder. With a yell, he challenges Romeo to combat. Mercutio leaps to Romeo's side and drags his friend forth by the arm. In the midst of running, he roars at Romeo. Why must it be her? That's Capulet's daughter. The old nurse who hastens to Juliet's side cautions her anxiously. My child, the man you've kissed is none other than the young Montague. 
Juliet dashes to her chambers and locks the door, not knowing whether she should laugh or weep. Having barely escaped, Romeo is set on returning to her, though plagued by doubt whether he is able to love the daughter of a foe. So, what do you think of it, Miss Anne? I don't know. Has Rosalind been forgotten so promptly? Oh, she was merely a distraction, a puppet of straw for Romeo's sonnets. Why was he supposed to mop around? Because he enjoyed playing the part. Hmm. Well, I don't like him like that. Is he serious about Juliet? Genuine is his love, yet genuine too is the danger which imperils that very love. What happens then, Master Shakespeare? Where had we stopped? At the point where Romeo flees and has misgivings whether he loves Juliet. It's not misgivings towards the love, only about whether it can bear fruit. It must! What could possibly prevent it when it is stronger than all the ancient hate? A grudge riven deep. That's what stands in its way. As an obstacle, yes, but one which can be hurdled. Romeo is not a frog, you know. <laughs> which is precisely why he must learn to leap. All right, fine. I shall take that into account. Romeo loves and is beloved by Juliet in turn. Two souls now bursting with enchantment, forced to love when they ought to hate. A cruel grudge must agonize them in their love. Deemed a foe and kept afar from Juliet, Romeo hasn't the chance to whisper love's vows in her ear. Like him with her, she yearns to see him once again, for their happiness demands that intimacy. Love imparts the strength for this path. The brightest happiness is lain in the darkest need. After escaping the enemy by a hair, Romeo has not the will to flee from love. Mercutio, still fleet of foot, believed his friend at home. But Romeo is set on putting house and hate behind him. Concealed outside the Capulet gate, he merely awaits the right moment to reach Juliet unseen. find something else there. Have you already tried there?
Perhaps we'll find what you need there. You might find something else there. Romeo doesn't linger when he sees the light in Juliet's room. As if borne by Amor's hand, in shadow he clambers high to that bright glow. At the edge of the balustrade, he pauses and takes a cautious peek across. Awash in doubt, Juliet feels she must know what had caused the feud. She steals away to her father's drawing room, seeking the legacy of her forefathers. The door to the past, yet one that her father has locked tight. Not one to give up, Juliet searches for the key to remembrance. You should take a look over there. find something else there.
You should take a look over there. Hidden remains the root of ancient hate, all that grows out of it senseless. Though the weed spreads rampant, Juliet is set on rescuing the shoot of her young love from its tendrils. Her tears are to water the tender sprout that it flourishes and grows large. With a sigh, she steps outside and looks up at the clear starry sky. From on high, the changing moon gazes down at our couple, who, as if guided by destiny's hand, met at the masked ball. In its shine, on the balcony, the two spy one another once more. As she lowers hers from the stars above, Juliet's eyes look into Romeo's. She is lost to him for good. Though she is not willing to let herself be won all too easily, his vow of fidelity, made as if entranced, is faithfully returned by her alike. Not only his heart is to secretly belong to her, he's to swear to God that he'll be true to her eternally. That very day, they want to promise their love in an abbey. And as the red dawn of morning brushes Juliet's cheeks, Romeo turns there to beg for support. With the first rays of morning sunlight, Romeo arrives at the Abbey. There, he asks Friar Lawrence to bind two hearts, though long since united, in holy matrimony. The Friar knows Romeo and his rapturous amours. Before willing to help, he wants to be sure how serious Romeo is about making such vows. As proof, the youngster must pass trials of virtue, four in all. You should take a look over there.
Romeo has proven himself to be virtuous. Now he can be sure of the friar's help. Lawrence is glad to help him, hoping that this is a way to settle the old strife between the two houses. That very evening, he wants to hold the wedding. Having already seen herself as bride at the Abbey, Juliet is now a prisoner in her own home. Her only thought, to flee from there. She begs her nurse to distract the guards. The old woman agrees, but hesitantly, for much is at stake. For the sake of young love, and loving Juliet as if she were her own child, she casts her doubts aside.